welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I'm going to get down on my knees and pray. I need God, but if he's going to speak to you tonight, you need God too. So you want to open up your heart, get ready for the Lord to minister to you. So stand to your feet and let's go before the Lord. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Thank you, Father, for a mighty move of your spirit in our hearts and our lives. We thank you, Father, that we have come into the house of God, not to hear from a man or a woman, but we've come into the house of God to hear from the teacher of the church who is the Holy Spirit. So welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us, motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, glory, and all the honor. And now, Father, we thank you for a mighty move of your spirit in our hearts and in our lives. But Lord, as you bless us, we are grateful, but we want you to bless all the churches in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are preaching and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodists, Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary Chapels and Harvest Oak Valley and Oasis, Inland Christian Center, the Assemblies of God, Foursquare Denomination. We thank you, Father, for our Trinity and Emmanuel Baptist and Ecclesia Church. And we thank you, Father, for the Way and San Bernardino Temple, our Catholic brothers and sisters and Adventist brothers and sisters. Bless them, Lord, as you would bless us this night. And we'll give you the praise, glory, and all the honor. We're all in agreement with a great big shout. We say amen. amen. Well, go ahead and take your seat. Get your Bible. Go with me to 2 Samuel the 22nd chapter, verse number two. There's a bunch of twos. So if you, if you forget where we're going, it's 2 Cham- Samuel, <laughs> to chapter number 22, verse number two. Two, 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 two is the address. And when you get there, I want to read you something, if I may, uh, out of the word of the Lord in 2 Samuel. And he said, listen to this, 22, verse Verse number two, and he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. These are words that David spoke. These are words that David learned. These are words that David had to grow into before they could come from the recesses of his heart. I want to share with you tonight, and especially the word, my deliverer. That God, as we get to know God, we never can know him to his fullest, but we can know him to the extent that he allows us to know him because he's so great, so vast, so wonderful, and so majestic beyond your thinking and beyond my thinking how great he really is. But as we get to know him, one of the ways we should know him is our divine deliverer. That each and every one of us, and that's literally the title of the message is your divine deliverer, that each and every one of us that are in here need to know him every day. Your divine deliverer. How powerful is that? I don't know where the back room is. I have no idea where our video department is, but video department, when I said this is the title of it, that would be a clue for you to put up the title of the message, and uh, thank you very much. Don't you know those poor guys get picked on a lot back there, but they're back there, we don't know who it is, right? So it's okay, we can pick on them, and uh, so it's great. God is great, mighty, and marvelous. In fact, can I tell you something? I've always said when you got God on your side, you could fall off a four-story building and land on your feet. Let me just say that again. You could fall off of a four-story building and land on your feet. You say, well, pastor, does that everybody? I don't think it's everybody. And I think this is where we need to understand. I'm talking about people like David, who is a deep, deep heart commitment to the Lord. And as he had a deep heart commitment to the things of God and to God himself, then God backs him and God delivers him. I think people who have a shallow relationship with God that's only in the mental realm, only in the, if you will, the religious realm, 
where they go to church, they put their penance in, their time in, they have an occasional thought, occasional prayer that they throw up. I say it every time we're together, you know, they're not against God, but they're not wholehearted for God. Then I wonder at that particular time, it's only the mercies of God that come and not really his delivering power that God wants to do. When you see him as your deliverer every day, then I don't care what the politicians do. I don't care what happens to the society, the social system. Of course I care, but I mean, it's not going to affect me. I don't care what the economic systems are like in the planet. It's not going to affect me because my God's my deliverer. It doesn't matter who's threatening, who isn't threatening, who's saying what things that are untrue or saying things that are true. There have always been times of trouble since the fall of Adam and Eve. We live in a troubled world without the presence of God, there will always be a troubled world that you and I live in. Jesus said, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And guess what these is, and I tell you this, it's good news to know that God is already in control of a world that's lost and dying and failing. He is, let me say this to you, our deliverer. Tonight, obviously, there's a lot of you in this room that need to know when you walk out those doors that God hadn't forgotten you. He is your deliverer. You may be facing problems, trials, tribulations, evil temptations. Life may have dealt you the wrong, if you will, cards or you have the wrong situation working in your life, but God is your deliverer. If you know that, then you can boldly approach the throne of grace, and that's what a lot of times we're learning, if you will, on the weekends, that God is your deliverer. Like David, finally gets to the place after running all of these years, running from his enemy, running from people that are tearing him down and want to kill him. I don't know about you, you may have financial problems, you may have physical problems, but there's not a lot of people that are hunting you, wanting to kill you. David had hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of people wanting to kill him for the reward that Saul had placed on him to make themselves heroes. Can you imagine running? And there's no place to run. It's not like a freeway. You can get on the uh, uh, freeway with your hot rod car and go 200 miles an hour and all of a sudden you're in Arizona a long ways away from you know Saul that's chasing him. Here he is in this area where people move by their feet by their legs. They can't go very fast. They can't go very far. And uh, everybody knows everybody and he's running for his life. Only the deliverer could possibly save him from the situations that he was facing. Tonight, only the deliverer can fa save you from the situations that some of you are facing in here. And God wants you to know that. He delivers us. There's four areas in Scripture I want to share with you that he delivers us. And there's many that he delivers. Probably delivers us from 40 or 50 different areas. But I don't want to give you 40 or 50 tonight. I want you to concentrate on these four quick areas of deliverance. Is that okay? Listen closely. And everything starts with he delivers us. He delivers us, number one, from physical limitations. We don't oftentimes think of that. I don't care where you're at, I don't care who you are, I don't care what physical restrictions you have. Let me just make that statement again. I don't care where you're at, I don't care who you are, and I don't care what your physical restrictions are, God delivers you from physical limitations. Why? Because what you accomplish in life is not accomplished by what you can physically do, what you accomplish in life is accomplished by who he is. And if you will believe him is the one who opens the door, and he's the one that closes the door, he's the one that takes something and makes something nothing and takes something and makes something out of it. He's the God that does all that needs to get done. He's a mighty and marvelous and wonderful God. He's the one that opens the blind eyes. He's the one that raises up the lame. He's the one that raises up the dead. He's the one that puts the sun in its right distance and holds the moon in its right access. 
He's God Almighty. He's the deliverer. It's not your future cannot be based on what you can do. Your future has got to be based on what he can do. And when you get a hold of that, it makes all the difference in the world. If you don't have a grip on that, you will be down, depressed, discouraged, and frustrated about life. Because life will put a yoke on you that makes things heavy. Like, you'll say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I've got this to do and that to do. I've got this area of pressure on me, and I, I'm not really prepared. I don't think I'm smart enough. I don't have the ability to do it. And you'll start to see yourself as failing, which brings the pressure on you instead of taking yourself to a place of realizing that God delivers you from physical limitations doesn't matter what you feel doesn't matter what you know doesn't matter what you can do doesn't matter what your ability is doesn't matter how far you went in school doesn't matter how much money you have doesn't matter how black you are doesn't matter how white you are doesn't matter how Hispanic you are with an accent doesn't matter any of that at all God can take you and make something out of you because it's not what you do it's what he does are you following me and we forget that all the time as Christians be honest with yourself we forget it therefore when we forget it we take the big burden of the world on us and we got the world on our shoulders and we got the weight of things on us and we don't know how we're going to make it and physical limitations I can only go so far but I'll push my way through I'll, I'll make it work I don't know how it's going to happen can I tell you how it's going to happen his name is Jesus he's going to make it happen Listen, if I thought I was the one that was healing people tonight, I would be in big trouble. It's not me. My job is to do the very best I can to hear from him, to call out who had something. And can I say something? You saw it right before your very eyes. I didn't take a survey in the parking lot. You didn't come in and say, well, what problem do you have so I can go tell Pastor Jim? The Holy Spirit told me. The people came and guess what? Now if God said he's going to heal you, start believing that God's going to heal you. Because it's not based on, and listen, can I say something? You cannot make it. Get it in your brain. Stop trying to make it. You can't make it. But God can make a way for you. You can't do it, but he's the one that does it. You can't see it, but he sees it for you. You can't think smart enough. He's the one with great wisdom. This is not about you. It's about him in you. And that's physical limitations for every one of us. And we look at life, we say, I can only do this. I can only go so far. I wonder how far we can go without any physical limitations. I love what it says in Acts, the, if you will, the fifth chapter. Go there with me. Here you'll find the high priests who were just angry as complete because the disciples were going around healing people. And man, they didn't like that. You know, they were the religious people. They were the religious leaders of the day. And who are these disciples coming in in my territory and healing people and drawing people to them? Who are they? And you'll find that the high priests in this area are just as frustrated as they can be. In fact, the Bible goes on and says they were full of indignation and they were just frustrated with these people. And here we find the disciples under persecution in Acts, the fifth chapter, and verse number 18. And it says this, and they laid hands on the apostles and put them in, in a, a common prison. Verse number 19, the fifth chapter of Acts. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go open your mouth, stand, speak, and, and explain what's going on. I mean, here, God, they're stopped. They can't do anything. Oftentimes, you're going to feel like you can't do anything, like you're in this physical prison. You're not smart enough. You're not quick enough. You're not clever enough. You're not talented enough. You're not gifted enough. And here's the truth. You're not. So you got to find some source that's greater than you. Guess who that is? His name is Jesus. He knew you couldn't do it. That's why he hooked up with you. In your weakness, he makes you strong. And man, I tell you what, Paul writes it like this. I can only do so many things in my own weakness, then I'm strong. Why? Because Jesus comes to my weakness and makes up the difference. 
Every one of us are going to have physical limitations. These guys are stopped in prison. In the common prison, there they are. They've been, they've been persecuted. And here, no way to get out. No, probably no money, probably no effort. Their whole life is stopped. And what happens? God opens the door for them. Tonight, how many of you are waiting for God to open the door? I'm here to tell you something. He's the deliverer. He will open a door. He's the God that makes a way. You don't know how you're going to make it. Can I tell you something? I don't know how you're going to make it either. But I'm here to tell you his name is Jesus. If you look to him, that's how you will make it. That's what I'm saying. For all of us, we forget this simple process of, of realizing that these stories of these apostles and these disciples of Jesus being thrown into prisons were there for a reason. Not only were they persecuted, their whole life stopped. I mean, stop and think about it. Here God speaks to, to a, a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus who's going to become Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle, his name before it was changed to, to Paul was Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus hears from God. And God gives him a time period called the dispensation of grace. In other words, I want you to preach my grace to the planet. I want you to tell people about Jesus. I want you to tell the whole planet about Jesus. Then God takes him and has him thrown into prison. And most of his ministry is from a prison cell. What you're reading tonight, oftentimes 60% of the New Testament was written from a prison cell, my friends. I mean, how would you like to have a, an assignment from God? I want you to preach to the world. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw you in an inner prison. Can you imagine what the prisons were like? They didn't have gymnasiums. There's nobody buffing up. Man, they didn't have food calls, you know, where everybody gets a sound meal. They didn't have dentists fixing their teeth. They didn't have people cutting their hair. Come on, man. Everybody went to the bathroom in one spot in the corner. And then the rats came and you fought them as well as you fought the people that were crazy in there. And from a cell like that with no mercy involved, here is God moving through a man. To this day, his writings are read by more people than any other piece of literature on the planet. That's God. Physical limitations. You can't do it, but God in you, he can. And you got to put your trust in the deliverer. Somebody ought to give me a great big amen. Listen, I got to go fast because in other words, we're not, I could just do this all night long. He's, we're talking about your divine deliverer and he delivers us is what we're talking about. Number one, he delivers us from physical limitation. But number two, I love this. He delivers us for righteousness sake. Now, unless you're called to be a martyr and you will know it if you are, because you will want to continue to go forward under persecution. But I want you to know I am not called to be a martyr. I am not called to go to some country and starve and get beaten up, thrown in prison. I told God, I said, God, I want to serve you in the United States, someplace where there's a steakhouse in Disneyland. You know what I'm talking about, some of you? You're not called to be a martyr. But those that are called to be a martyr, God bless them. There's a special place in heaven for them, and we love them. But I want you to know something. Probably most of you in here are not called to be a martyr that lays their life down. But you know what the Bible says? That you're to live as a living martyr. You're to give up all of who you are uh, and die to yourself. That's called momartris in the original Greek. And therefore, you will die to yourself to be a living martyr uh, before the Lord. But I want you to hear this. Number two, listen to this. He will, he will deliver us for righteousness' sake. In other words, when you do what God wants you to do, and it's an outstanding do, <laughs> let, me try to, let, me, let me try to say that again. If you do what you do, and it's an outstanding do, <laughs> in other words, you did the do right, <laughs> 
and you find yourself in a place where you catch the attention of God, God will deliver you. Let me show you that in the scripture, if I may. So sometimes we wonder, what's the benefit of living right with God? The living right with God, he's a deliverer for those that have a heart to live life for him. Is anybody listening? You're in Acts anyway. Go with me to Acts in the 16th chapter. And let's take a look at Acts, the 16th chapter, starting verse number 22. I'm going to read a couple of verses here, so I want you to follow me. Acts, the 16th chapter, kind of like the story we just read in Acts 5th chapter, but a little bit different. Is that okay? Then the multitude rose up, verse number 22 of the, of the 16th chapter of Acts. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beat with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them in prison commanding the jailer to keep them, seek, uh, them uh, securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet and, stock, feet and stocks. Now, can I just say something to you? What, can I just say, can you imagine what it must have been like to be serving the Lord, having someone beat you, throw you in prison? Then you get in this prison this lousy, dirty prison, your clothes are torn off of you. You, you, you got to understand, I, I say this so many times, you couldn't go to Walmart and buy a $5 shirt. This is clothes that was handmade. It cost them a year's salary for what they wore. They had one outfit. They washed it in the rivers as they crossed through the rivers, put them on, on the other side wet and moved on in their life. That's how the men and women took baths in those days. They still do it that way in third world countries. And here they are with this wealth on them called clothes. They tore their clothes. That's why they tore their clothes. They were really getting to them. And then they beat them, man, with rods. Their backs broken open and blood's all over the place. I would have given up right then, to be honest with you. I'd have told God, forget it, God. I hate this. This is the lousiest ministry in the whole world. I hate this kind of a ministry. Give it to somebody else. And no, but these guys are unbelievable. Then they go before this, if you will, this uh, pr jail uh, prison guard. And the prison guard takes them and throws them into the inner prison. In other words, there's all kinds of gates going out. They can't just get out. Then they put their feet in stocks. Man, I, I, can I just be honest with you? I'm just not that spiritual. I don't think you are either. I'd have been cussing up a storm right now and asking God to forgive me. I'll, I'm going to swear a whole lot and then repent later on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can we be honest about such a thing? Come on, let's be honest with this. I mean, whether you like it or not, you know darn well you'd be questioning God too. And all of a sudden, here's what happens. Here's what these guys are like. Verse number 25, get the picture. What a righteous act. And at the midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Oh, my goodness. Is there a difference between them and me? Am I even saved, God? Listen to this. And the, singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, I love the suddenlies in the Bible, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everybody's chains were loose. Wait a minute. We're talking about God the deliverer. If you were in prison, in the inner prison and someone just beat your back open, tore your only outfit, you know, and you got your inner stocks and there's this big earthquake, and the earthquake opens the outer doors, the inner doors, opens the stocks, and everybody's chains that are on them fall off. Would you take the hint that God has opened the door for you to leave? It would be, adios, I'm out of here, amigos. And I'd be praising God all the way across the courtyard, you know. Oh, glory to God, you did it this time, Lord. Now that's what I'm talking about. You know darn well you'd do that, wouldn't you? These guys are so righteous with God, they don't act like me and you. Oh no, there's something on the inside of them that's different. Watch this. 
Verse 27, the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open. And supposing, like logically that means, that the prisoners had fled, drew out a sword that he kills himself because he knows he's in trouble. And Paul calls with a loud voice, hey, do not harm yourself for we are all here. And he goes, and he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them and he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? When a man puts his life on the line for someone else, let me say it again. When a man puts his life on the line for someone else, let me say it again. And that's what he did. Paul didn't run. He put his life on the line for someone else so that one person would get saved. His whole family got saved. But he puts his, his life on the line for someone else. That's what Paul and Silas did. Instead of running man in this righteous act of caring about someone else before he cared about himself, God comes forth and delivers him from that prison. And the point being is that, man, when you and I are righteous, you can expect God to back us all the way. And we, we just need to be someone who doesn't just do righteousness, but has it on the inside. Someone who does righteousness when the gates are open and the jails are open, they go through it. But it, someone who has righteousness on the inside stops and considers, now God, what is it you want me to do? Yeah. The obvious is before me, what do you want me to do? And instead of rushing to the obvious, you rush to God. Let me say it again. Righteous, instead of rushing to the obvious, rush to God. And we all have opportunities in our life to rush to the obvious. The obvious is not always God. But when you rush to what is God, now God will deliver you. Is anybody listening? I, 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 I'm going to quit. I'm going to give you one more. I have a whole bunch more. But I'm going to give you one more uh, uh, that I, I think is very, very important. I like this one. This is my last one for tonight, even though I have another one after that. But I don't have time. Here's what, it, here's what it is. He delivers us. He delivers us from physical limitations, number one. He delivers us for righteousness' sake, number two. But he delivers us from a perverted world. Now look, listen to what I'm going to say to you men, and I'm going to say to you women. You hear me now. A lot of your problems is because of what you're doing and thinking. And where your mind goes is where you will eventually go. Are you following me? And we live in this perverted world. The internet can show you anything at all times and anywhere. And it seems like it's just you and by yourself. When in fact the Holy Spirit is there with you. Listen to me. Listen to me. And you can go to church all you want, but you will never get delivered from the perversions that you're involved in until you make up your mind and determine in your heart that you will not have a portion of the king's meat. Which means that you decide not to do that. And you come along and you make a decision. There's not a person in this room if you're human, that you didn't come to a place in your walk where you didn't say to yourself, I'm not going there. You can feel the spirit pulling you. You can feel something tugging you. You can feel the perversion coming at you. It's almost like some kind of a supernatural ore that comes along and powers you to do something. And before you know it, you're involved in it. And then afterwards, you hate your guts and you know it. You hate yourself for it. You can get delivered from the perverted world You've got to learn how to cast down imaginations. Determine in your heart you're not going to do it. And draw upon the power of the Holy Spirit that will help you to stop. If you don't, you're going to be meat for the devil. And somebody needs to love you enough to tell you. There's this nephew, if you will, of Abraham by the name of Lot and his wife. They choose to go to a land, we know it as... The Valley of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Sodom and Gomorrah, it was a fertile land. It looked good. 
prospered in the land. His sheep were fed well. He chose it himself. But the area was filled with perversion. I'm talking about, you think sexual perversion now is bad in America? I'm talking about sexual perversions in those days that are just as disgusting if more so and more blatant than they are now. More blatant than they are now. Just as wrong to God. We have a whole society growing up right now that doesn't even believe that things like that are nothing but normal. It's not normal. And somebody needs to love you enough and help you out of Sodom and Gomorrah so you don't get annihilated. And you will find that they go to rescue Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah. And they take them out. And when they're taken out, let's read it for ourselves. Go with me to Genesis. In the 19th chapter. And when they start to take them out, something interesting happens. Listen closely. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I find it fascinating. Genesis, the 19th chapter. I have for you on verse 16, but I'll go back to verse 15 and then I'll put up on the overhead verse 16. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed by the punishment of this city. In other words, here's the angels of God telling him, come on, man, pick it up. Let's go. If you don't get out now, you're going to be annihilated. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm like a trumpet to you right now. If you don't get out now, you're going to fail. And verse number 16, and while he lingered, did you know that sin has its pleasure for a season? It feels good. It looks good. Everybody else is doing it that way. It's okay for me. No, it's not. And while you're lingering there, there's a consuming fire coming to those that are in that spot, and you need to get out of that spot. And somebody needs to love you enough to tell you. And while he lingered, the men took a hold of his hand and his wife's hand. Here is these men of God grabbing a hold of his hand and pulling him out. And I want you to know something. For every one of us in here, the one who will help you and grab a hold of your hand and pull you out, his name is Jesus. Because sometimes we don't want to get out, but we know we should. We don't know how we're going to make it. We don't know if we can really fulfill it. We don't know if we can accomplish it. We don't know if we can stop it. We don't know how it's going to work. We don't know what to do, and we need help. The one who's the helper, his name is Jesus. Now notice what it says. It grabs a hold of their hands, the two daughters, and the Lord be merciful to him. And they brought him out to set him outside of the city. And then the annihilation took place. But notice how he lingered in his sexual perverted place. Some of you may not be sexually perversion. It may just be a lack of relationship with God. Some of you may not have a home, may not have a place, may not have a feeling, may not have a real relationship with a king of glory. And you need to get out of that complacent spot. You need to stop lingering around in your sin and stop lingering around because you're not doing what you need to do and you know you need to. And tonight the Spirit of God is speaking to you saying you need to come out of Sodom and you need to come out and be free and God wants to touch you. He'll deliver you, set you right, and bless you. But you gotta wanna come out. <sighs> what would Lot and his wife and his two daughters said if they said, no, we're not going with you? Forget it, tomorrow maybe, not tonight. 
Not gonna go, I'll do it next week. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Let me say it again. Tonight is your night of deliverance. And you know that you've been messing with God. You know you've been compromised with God. You know what you should be doing. You have a heart. You know with your mind that you need to get out of where you're at and you need to get free and you need to go with God and you need to get washed by his blood and you need to know you're a child of God and you need to know the Holy Spirit's living on the inside of you. Tonight is your night. And I'm not going any further. We're not taking up an offering until this is done. Tonight, I'm speaking to you, whoever you are, and there's a lot of you, you need to get right with God because you're about ready to be annihilated. And tonight, someone's helping you reaching out, grabbing your hand to pull you forward, and that's the Holy Spirit. And you need to get out of your seat. No clapping. No movement. Only those that know I'm talking to you right now, you need to stand now. I said 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 you need to stand now. Now. Not later, not tomorrow, not next week. You're gonna miss it. Tonight, now, is your night of salvation. Now get your stuff and get up here. Get your stuff and get up here. Get your stuff and get up here. And anybody that knows he needs to get right with God, get up here right now. You come now. Come on. Come on. Get out of your seat and come now. You know I'm talking to you. Get out of your seat and come now. Don't play the piano. There's a different spirit in here. Tonight is your night of repentance. Tonight, God's gonna wash you clean. Tonight, the slate is wiped out. Tonight, forever, you belong to him. Tonight is your night. David, get up here. What are you doing back there? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to follow him that's waving at you right over there to that side of the sanctuary. He'll take you right over there, pray with you tonight, and then he'll let you come right back in the church service. Listen to me. You didn't come forward. The devil and all of hell saw you come forward. But God and all of his angels saw you come forward. All these people saw you come forward. This is a serious, serious time. It's the most serious time in your entire life. The past is over with. And God's going to set you free tonight. Tonight. Let me tell you, what you used to do, you will get sick at doing in the future until you stop it. What you used to do, you will get sick in doing until you stop it. Tonight, God is gonna clean up your act. 
Make a left turn, follow Pastor David right over there. All SPTs, get up over there with them. Come on, if you're an SPT, get over there right now. Come on. Now give the Lord a great big praise. <laughs>